Now we have uh, Hannah Rudman, she's the Director of Strategic Transformation, and she's going to tell us about Wallet Services a Startup and the company from the EI Accelerator as well we have here at the Base Center. Thanks, Ahmed. Okay, so I am a digital transformation expert. I've worked on digital transformation with over 200 companies. But now I work for a technology startup, Wallet Services, and what we're dealing with is the new and emerging technology of distributed uh, ledger technologies and blockchain. But that time as a digital transformation expert, what that taught me was the impact of new technological innovations uh, on the economy and how they create uh, that economic uh, impact. So some of the things we've heard about today are disruptive innovations. They're going to be new ways of doing new things. But some of the innovations that we've heard about are incremental innovations. And by incremental innovations, I mean they probably help a business to have a new value, to be able to sell customers something a little bit better, or to perhaps be able to do something a little bit more efficiently. So distributed ledger technologies are both a disruptive innovation in that we're going to be able to do new things uh, differently and an incremental innovation in that it's going to help businesses uh, do uh, what they do already better, faster, cheaper. Um, so in terms of why Wallet Services came about, we all find ourselves at this point uh, in life where we have to be a little bit worried about what we do on the internet. So whether we're citizens or whether we're businesses, we have to be careful about the way that we uh, um, uh, handle data. In the first half of 2018, there were 945 data breaches. That was up on the same period, 133%. And in 2018, that was 4.5 billion data records that were compromised um, and found in the wrong place, being used for the wrong thing. So uh, we, as a, a group of computer scientists, think that that's a, a terrible situation uh, for us all to be in. And so our massive transformational purpose is to make the internet a safe place to do business and have a digital uh, life as a citizen again. The, um, uh, the, the reason that we're kind of in this uh, state of being uh, not able to uh, kind of trust doing business and life on the internet is because we're using old technologies and they've become unfit for purpose because we're asking them to do things that they're not very good at. So databases, 50 years old, uh, are good at storing things centrally, not so good at sharing data. Um, transport mechanisms like TCP IP, good at transporting data, not good at transporting it securely. And of course, those are the things we're asking it to do. And what we saw was the potential of distributed ledger technologies to be able to uh, transport data uh, securely and to enable safe sharing of data between organizations and between individuals and organizations uh, more safely. So we have built a software platform uh, with distributed ledger technologies to enable businesses uh, to be able to um, do that uh, data transfer more securely, more safely. So we're a team of uh, 10 full-timers now, but back in 2016 when the company founded, it was a team of two. It was these two guys here, the founders. And with that massive transformational purpose, with that vision of wanting to make the internet um, a safe place again, they began to gather people around them and to uh, find bits of work where they could apply uh, DLT uh, to business problems. So we're 
uh, what are we now? We're two and a half years old. We've uh, raised over a million pounds. We've gathered a fantastic set of advisors um, around us. But what we needed at the beginning was a funded opportunity to be able to prove out that idea that distributed ledger technologies could help you uh, share data more safely. And so we responded to uh, the original CivTech program. CivTech is a great program we have here in Scotland that enables government uh, bodies to put out challenges that they have and then technology companies come and uh, suggest and work with them uh, to uh, devise and co-create solutions uh, with them. So it's not the kind of usual standard procurement where they say what the brief is and you work out whether you fit that brief. It's uh, far more uh, kind of co-inventive. So that was the first piece of paid work that we did, and that led us to have a, a good relationship with the Digital Directorate at the Scottish Government who then, in uh, 2017, commissioned us to write a report for them. And that report was to uh, report in on how distributed ledger technologies could be used in public services. So we reviewed the global landscape, but we also had the opportunity to interview many of the leaders of the public sector bodies in Scotland. And of course, what that gave us was insight into what their needs were and how DLT uh, would be able to uh, uh, help uh, improve their services. Also, the report um, enabled us to uh, gain a little bit of political traction. Um, and so uh, the report was presented to a number of MPs uh, and MSPs. Um, and again, that just uh, kind of helped the... Um, understanding and the profile of distributed ledger technologies as a new emerging technology uh, become better understood here in Scotland, something that Scotland PLC could use. And then by the middle of 2018, all of that work resulted in us having a good enough profile that actually uh, the government uh, gave us uh, a, a multi-year contract. So we won that in the middle of uh, 2018. Um, and so the business can begin to scale off the back of that contract. But we needed more than a public sector market. Public sector markets are reliable, but they are slow and take twice as long to uh, do anything. And it probably costs you twice as much uh, to do anything as well. So we needed other sectors that we could work in. And then um, a relationship uh, that we had with the University of Strathclyde uh, resulted in us being asked to do a proof of concept uh, for some oil and gas companies. So uh, that was about uh, tracking assets in a supply chain. And that enabled us to um, kind of rehearse the idea that DLT uh, would be a good technology to assure supply chains and to enable organizations to be able to share data safely and confidentially uh, while still uh, ensuring that uh, assets were safe in those supply chains. So, you know, why is that important? Well, the food supply chain, for example, uh, sees um, a third of the total supply being recalled and it's then wasted. And that costs the food industry a trillion dollars every year. And then think about, um, remember the Samsung uh, Galaxy uh, 7 phone, which of course had the batteries which went on fire. The cost of recall for that was five billion pounds. So supply chain um, efficiency and integrity is really important. The other sectors that we could think of that might have the same issues as well as the oil and gas sector, which has big critical assets that they need to assure or um, you know, uh, essential parts that they need to assure were any sector that had goods in, like the food sector, or any situation where sensitive data was being exchanged, like in the public sector use cases. 
perhaps where transactions need to be assured. So uh, the uh, finance and banking uh, uh, sector or where you need to be sure that permissions and processes have happened properly, perhaps a health and safety environment. And then, you know, those parts that go through a supply chain and need to be assured for quality. So as we were dealing with those problems, we were building out our software and building out the uh, tools with which um, uh, users in any different sector could begin to uh, apply um, and, and make their own uh, workflows in their own uh, specific contexts. Um, so uh, we've had the benefit of paid customer projects, which has enabled the building out of that pro product. And the, the toolkit that we have um, built on, on top of the, the core supernode and executor is like a design tool, so it enables people to be able to more easily uh, do it themselves without our intervention. And the toolkit, if it's what you see is what you get, and if it's written in business language, means that you don't even need to be a developer to be able to use it. You might just be at a business analyst level, but you'd still be able to set up your own uh, distributed uh, ledger network and um, blockchain um, uh, data flow. So that's the architecture uh, that we've developed. Uh, it's to be blockchain network agnostic. And working on those projects has enabled these early um, uh, pilots to move into production. So uh, this year, we're uh, working uh, with a bigger oil and gas consortium uh, in order to uh, assure a, a much bigger supply chain. And another thing that has really helped us is be able to think about how we visualize um, distributed uh, ledger technology networks and how you kind of inform people with a, a, a picture that understand, that helps them build a mental uh, landscape of what they're doing. So that um, idea of being able to uh, visualize uh, what a network is doing um, enabled us to win a second piece of work far more easily and quickly uh, with an energy generator. So that's us not just in the oil and gas sector, but in the energy sector uh, as well now. We also have use cases in the food and drink sector, and of course those original use cases in the public sector uh, now being able to uh, be talked about as case studies and, and generate further uh, use cases and um, uh, uh, solve uh, more problems. So uh, we're just working at the moment on um, enabling a patient applying for a disability benefit to have that attest attestation from their GP um, just done once. And then all the benefits agencies can uh, see that that's happened. They trust it and uh, they can um, uh, release those benefits more quickly. The other thing, uh, as you can tell from um, the, the content of my talk so far, is that relationships with universities have been uh, important. That relationship with the University of Strathclyde introduced us to um, some uh, of our earliest clients in the oil and gas sector. Um, we've been on the WIRA accelerator here at the university for the past six months, and that's introduced us to uh, other um, customers and clients and collaborators of the University of Edinburgh, and it's introduced us to um, uh, investors that the University of Edinburgh uh, knows. And it's introduced us to um, uh, the um, ability to be able to do uh, the research part of our development as well. So we've been able to put some uh, core challenges that we still don't know the answer to uh, around some cryptographic uh, models um, back to master's students for them to help us uh, do that really innovative thinking that will then uh, enable us to do uh, better business. And just a reflection on what it is like to be on an accelerator program. They really help you define your target markets. 
and they really help you define what the value of your product is. So if you have an opportunity to go on an accelerator program, uh, we definitely recommend that, and we definitely recommend um, ensuring that you uh, keep uh, relationships with uh, universities at the heart of what you do. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you for letting me share my story. Thanks very much, Hannah.